in Utah because that's where our next big trial is preparing for opening statements in this pending civil case between a retired optometrist and actress Gwyneth Paltrow is set to start. Paltrow is being sued, accused of running over a man on a ski slope in Deer Valley, Utah, causing him broken ribs and a brain injury. She has countersued in this claim, saying, uh, no, he's actually the person that ran into her. A jury of seven plus two alternates has been seated. Opening statements are expected to begin tomorrow. We thought maybe this was gonna be settled because, you know, it's a civil case involving a celebrity, but looks like it's not. And in Park City, Utah, we're for us is Court TV legal correspondent, Julia Janae. Uh, look at all that snow around her really coming down. Uh, Julia, set the table for us. So much snow here, Ted. And as you mentioned, we were thinking, could this settle? But I can tell you, based on this morning, these attorneys were here bright and early in the cold, hammering out final things in this case, getting things set up, getting the equipment set up. So at this point, no signs of this case settling. But definitely signs of snow here. When the jurors arrive, they are going to see the pounds, um, the piles of snow here. I mean, this is the third judicial district court here in Park City, Utah, where everything is going to unfold. And what we're surrounded by in this case that happened on a ski slope are these majestic mountains. It's beautiful here. And you see that everywhere you look here uh, in this complex where the Justice Center is, there's the jail, there are different uh, law enforcement buildings that are in this area. But this place is expected to be packed tomorrow. There are multiple media outlets that are expected to cover this civil case uh, along with national media as well and our cameras are going to be inside of that courtroom where we expect Gwyneth Paltrow her husband her children to also be attending this trial we expect that she's going to be taking the stand at some point along with Terry Sanderson the plaintiff in this case so things are heating up in the courtroom but definitely chilly out here outside of the courthouse <laughs> uh, jury picked last week what do we know about this jury this is a jury of eight plus two alternates. Only eight are going to deliberate. And these alternates, they're not going to know who they are. So all 10 of them are going to be able to pay attention as if they are going to be the actual jurors on this panel. Now, the interesting way about how these jurors were sworn in and seated on Friday, I was there on this conference call with them. But not only was the media on a conference call and the attorneys, but the jurors were in the comfort of their own homes, uh, getting sworn in, getting asked the questions. And I know is uh, when they were asked about whether or not they know Gwyneth Paltrow because that was an important part of Wadir. Are you going to be able to be fair and treat her the same way you would treat any other citizen? Uh, many of them raised their hands. There were about 92 that were in the pool initially. Almost all of them raised their hand. But I noted one woman in her 20s Oh, who didn't raise her hand. I wasn't sure if she didn't hear the question or if she just didn't hit the button uh, on her computer that did the emoji to raise your hand. But that same woman is on this jury. So we may have someone on this jury panel who wasn't initially familiar with Gwyneth Paltrow. Maybe it'll change when she sees her in person, Ted. Yeah, when well, she sees a clip of Iron Man, uh, if she does, of course. Uh, now... Gwyneth Paltrow, and there are two different sides. I mean, this is this is the classic he said, she said, because they're saying the exact opposite. Uh, Sanderson's saying she ran into me. Uh, she's claiming he ran into her. What does she say about um, this case and anything that she might do with uh, any proceeds if she wins? Well, we know that he was initially suing her for $3.1 million. He backed off of that in his amended lawsuit, saying that he just wants fair damages. And we understand from the pretrial hearings in this case that they are going to be asking this jury some number between $2 million and $7 million. So that's the plaintiff side in this case. But Gwyneth Paltrow is not only the defendant who is saying that she was the downhill skier, she was the one who had the right of way, but she's also counterclaiming for a dollar. It's symbolic, but she she also put this in her answer that she believes that this uh 
counterclaim is going to address that the only reason he's coming after her is to exploit her celebrity and her wealth. And she says any recovery, if the jury does decide to give her more than the dollar, give her an actual amount of money for her injuries and uh, any issues that she sustained that day from being hit by Sanderson, which is her claim, she says she's going to donate that to charity. So we may hear that in those opening statements. Those are going to be done by Attorney Bueller for the uh, the plaintiff side of this and Attorney uh, Owens on the defense side. That's all happening tomorrow. Okay, and uh, we will be watching and you will be there. Stay warm. Uh, Julia Janae, thank you for uh, joining us here to discuss this case. A little bit more state attorney in uh, Palm Beach County, Florida, Dave Ehrenberg. Dave, uh, good afternoon. Um, it seems from Gwyneth Paltrow's statement they're talking about any potential proceeds that this is one of those cases where whether she was, you know, someone said, hey, let's just settle, get this, you know, give this guy a couple, uh, you know, thousand dollars. No, she didn't want, she's going to trial and uh, is willing to endure the cameras and everything else that goes along with civil litigation. Um, boy, this should be something to watch. Yeah, Ted, good to be with you. Also, uh, Julia Janae, great report from a beautiful ski resort. She gets the best gigs. I, I want her agent, you know. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. To to, right? Chandler Painter's stuck in uh, North Dakota. No offense to my friends up there, but, I mean, Julia's got it made. So here's the deal. Gwen Paldro doesn't want the reputational damage. I mean, even if it's for a dollar, she doesn't want to be seen as the person who skied into this innocent guy and then left him stuck in the snow. And she really believes in her in what happened because, look, I think it's going to be very hard for the plaintiff to prove, even by the lowered standard in civil cases, by a preponderance of the evidence, that Gwyneth Paltrow violated her duty of care, that she was negligent. And then the plaintiff also has to show that his injuries are a direct result of the ski injuries. There's only one witness, apparently. She didn't even see everything. She just came up right afterwards, it's a ski instructor, and blamed the plaintiff, blamed him for the accident. So I don't know about this case. I think it's going to be a, a loser. Yeah, it, it would seem that uh, way, and some of the claims have already been dismissed. Uh, negligent infliction of emotional distress, punitive damages, lawsuit against Deer Valley Resort and its employee, employees, and, and that's part of the Utah ski law, which, believe it or not, they've got a ski law on the books because uh, there are a lot of resorts, and the, the gist of it is you can't sue the ski um, hill or the employees for inherent risks that happen you know people run into each other out there and um so that was taken away the the other part of the equation I, I wonder how many skiers there will be on the jury because visualizing gwyneth paltrow flying down a slope a green slope um into a, a, a person and then getting up and, and skiing off just doesn't I don't know if it passes the, the, the smell test. Um, it just seems odd, but, you know, maybe it did happen. You know, yeah, I, I just, I, you'd have to believe, Ted, that Gwyneth Paltrow skied down this bunny slope, ran into this guy who had severe injuries, left him in the snow essentially to die, right? That she, and I, I chuckle about it because it, it's hard to fathom that. I mean, according to the rules, of the resort you have to stay around you have to give your information she said she did and she was told by the local instructors that she could go so all she has to do is to show someone who told her yeah you can go i mean but the burden's not even on her the burden is on the plaintiff and so that's why i think that's gonna be really hard for him to prevail in this case yeah, we'll see. We should, would you hear from both of them? And this will be uh, a scenario where we can judge, you know, which side is likely telling the truth uh, through their testimony because as good as an actress you may be, you need the truth on your side when you're in a courtroom, don't you, Dave? Because it's, it's tough to pull that baby off. And uh, we'll see if the good doctor or the trained actress will uh, b have more uh, jurors believe them. Anyway, we're, tomorrow... We're expecting opening statements. Let's get a break in here. When we come back,